David went, sat down and began to write. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Then he goes to Psalm 24. He says what? The Lord, the earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, and everything that is in it. Who shall stand upon the holy hill of the Most High? But he who has a pure heart he whose hands are clean and his mouth knows no deceit he shall say unto his God to his God of Jacob Selah lift up all heads you everlasting doors be lifted up and the king of glory shall come in did you notice the Bible says you everlasting doors in life every person has got some doors and these doors are everlasting no you didn't hear me what have I said there are people right now who are experiencing everlasting doors there are people right now who are experiencing everlasting gates let me explain before you sit down. Let me explain to you before you sit down. Are you ready for this one? Are you ready for this one? Did you hear the Bible saying? It says, lift up your heads. You heads. Lift up your heads. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors. To, to be lifted up means to be removed. If you say, I had a ban in my visa and the ban has been lifted up, it means it has been taken out. Watch this. So the gate, you stand over here. He stands over here like this. The ancient gates. There will be here, there will be Oh, let me find another thing here quickly that I can use as an example. Let me use, okay, can I have another person, please? All right, just come over here. All right, thank you so much. So, the gate, the ancient gates. So, this is a passage. Uh, are you here, right? So, they would, they would put here a heavy material. And this could be a steel. Now, the more they lift this up, because of this heavy material, this was being lifted up. You know those odd gates? You know those type of gates? So when you hold this, this is called the head. The, the heavy, the heavy uh, load, which they would put here, whether it's a stone, whatever it is, it is called the head. If this one is not dropped, the gates will not open. So it has to drop because of the weight. It will make this one go up like this. I hope you know that, right? Oh, yes. Maybe sit it. Now, not you. Anyone who will sit down. You are sitting on your testimony. Just one more minute. Say one more minute. Watch this. Now, so the Bible says, are, are you there? Or you went home? How many are here? How many are here? Ask the neighbor, are you here or you went home? What are they saying? It says what? Lift up your heads. All you get. This word that is being spoken. It is being spoken as a declaration because God knows they are gates. This was a prophetic action. 
Because this all, this that is here, uh, uh, Psalm 24, is a prediction of Jesus. What will happen to him when he is dead? He's in the grave and he's resurrecting. So David, by prophetic eyes, saw what was happening in the spirit. When Jesus would die, what would happen? There would be gates to block him. Do you hear that? So from, from verse 1, it talks about the creation. And who shall come? The one who has not sworn in deceit, which is Jesus, with the clean hands, which is Jesus, he is coming. Did you hear that? As he's coming, gates are being put in the spirit to block him. But shockingly, these gates are called everlasting gates. See that scripture? It says what? Check it out. It says what? Lift up your heads, all your gates, and be lifted up who? You. You. This is an address to the spiritual things. You everlasting doors. Ever heard someone saying, I want my doors to open? Ever heard somebody saying that? Have you ever heard somebody saying they want their doors to open? Do you know what they mean? There are certain doors in a life which are everlasting. They will never open for you. No matter how you pray, you fast. There are keys. There are seven keys in the spirit to open doors. How many keys? I will tell you next year. How, how many keys? Seven. If you know these keys, can you imagine the Bible admits that there are keys in the spirit? I mean, there are doors in the spirit. He says what? Who's talking here? It is God himself. Jesus wants to resurrect from the dead, but there were gates. So he is addressing the gates. Oh, I can see Terminator in New York. Wow, that's fantastic, amazing. God bless you. God bless you. I love Apostle Nick Magora. He's in New York to strengthen the breathing in the New York City. Watch this. I think we must hold him there. Next Sunday, he must be in Washington, D.C. Now, watch this. Watch this. And I can also see prophetess, Mabel. She's also there. And the Lord said to me, can I, can I tell you something? Yes, Papa. There are gates in the... Sp I want you to hear this statement. Yes. Can you imagine... God himself, he sees gates which are put for Jesus. Who do you think you are? If you think there are no gates in your life, who do you think you are? If Jesus himself had to deal with the gates and he took the Father in heaven. That's why when Jesus was going on the cross, he even said, my Father, my Father, why have you forsaken me? Because the Father had dealt with it already in the Old Testament. When God was dealing with it, David saw it in the spirit. So Jesus was like, why have you forsaken me? Not knowing that the Father had already commanded the gates. Am I telling somebody here? Are you here, right? He said what? He said, be lifted up. Why? Verse 8 answers the question, why should the gates open? Who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and the mighty in battle. He is the king of glory. I want to say this thing to you. Have you noticed that there was a man by the name Simeon? I want you to hear this statement before you sit down. There was a man by the name who? I want you to hear this statement. In English, Simon. 
Simon, the man called is Simon. And I want you to hear this word. Simon, who Jesus changed his name to what? To Peter. And I want you to hear this. Are, are you following? When his name was Simon, he had gates in his life. And when Jesus changed his name, he said, from now, the gates of hell shall not. Your name is Peter. From now, the gates of hell shall not. Meaning, when he was Simon, what was prevailing? There were gates. And Jesus, how did he do it? He said, I give you keys of the kingdom. He said, I give you keys of the kingdom. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. Some of you here, your money is just right there. But between you and your money, there is an everlasting gate. Can I break it? Now, I want you to hear this. Between you and your miracle, what is in between? Gets. One time I'll teach you the keys. Don't, no problem. The seven keys in the spirit. Do you understand? Is you stand where you are like this. Where you are, your miracle is right there in front of you. There is a gate. The devil says, you will not pass here. And you standing there, the devil says, you will not pass here. I was talking to my partners two days ago. I wanted to them two keys because they are partners. You see, if, if you are a partner of God, if, if God is using you, you know, to assist the kingdom to advance, you deserve to know certain things which normal members don't know. Because you see why? How many are partners here? Or how many would like to one time to be partners in the future? How many think of one time I would like to be a partner? When is that? When is that? When you have money. Hear this. Hear this. If you're a partner, if you're a partner, watch this. If you're a partner, I would like to make a special prayer for you. Or if you want to be a partner in the future, where you say, if God blesses me, I want to bless the ministry. I want to bless. How many are saying like that? But the problem is you have put an if. The problem is if. So that because there's a condition of phrase, if. I want to pray. This is my word to all of you. I would like to encourage everybody to be partners. Be involved with what God is doing. I want to pray because I can sense every gate, an everlasting gate in front of you. It has to break today. You see, it's like you can you imagine you see you see a contract in front of you, but you can't get it because there's a what? Raise up our two hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, every gate, the Bible mentions of everlasting doors. Some of you have got everlasting doors in life. Looks like it's how your life is being like that. That's how we discover everlasting doors. If you are passing through certain situation and it is not changing year after year, it means there is an everlasting door in that area. Everlasting doors for them to come out. The Bible says God had to rebuke them. He said, all you get, all you doors, God was addressing them. He was addressing the doors. I address every gate of your life. Be lifted up. 
I open every gate in the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.